252 million years ago, the world came closer to silence than at any other time in its history. The story begins not with the fall of an asteroid or the march of ice, but with fire rising from beneath the crust of the Earth. Vast volcanic fields in what is now Siberia poured rivers of molten rock across the land for hundreds of thousands of years. The eruptions were not sudden explosions, but endless floods of lava, accompanied by fumes that darkened the skies and poisoned the air. The Earth trembled, and with each surge, the balance of life grew weaker. In the oceans, the change was swift and merciless. Volcanic gases seeped into the atmosphere, washing down as acid rain that stripped nutrients from the land and carried toxins into rivers and seas. Waters grew sour, shells dissolved, and the delicate chains of marine life began to snap. Coral reefs that had thrived for millions of years disappeared almost completely. Fish and invertebrates that depended on them followed, leaving empty stretches where vibrant ecosystems once flourished. On land, the forests suffered under skies heavy with ash and sulfur. Plants withered, their roots unable to draw nourishment from soil turned acidic. Grazing animals starved, and the predators that depended on them soon faced the same fate. Fossil records reveal whole communities vanishing at once, their remains layered in rock as grim testimony to the speed of the collapse. The scale of destruction was unlike anything before. More than 90% of marine species perished, along with the majority of creatures on land. Whole branches of the evolutionary tree were cut away in a geological instant. The earth, once loud with life, fell into a silence so deep that it seemed permanent. This catastrophe, later called the Great Dying, is remembered not only for the scale of loss, but for the questions it still raises. How could the planet shift so quickly from abundance to near desolation? What clues remain in the rocks that explain how life teetered on the edge of disappearance? And most importantly, how did the survivors endure and set the stage for the world that came after. In the sun-baked deserts of South Africa, paleontologists uncovered a mystery that would change how we understood the history of life. While chipping away at layers of rock more than 200 million years old, they began to find fossils stacked in ways that told of sudden disaster. Whole groups of animals, once vibrant and thriving, appeared to vanish in the same geological layer. The bones were not scattered gradually through time as in most fossil beds, but pressed together as if the world itself had collapsed all at once. Among the remains were the reptile-like dicynodonts, once among the most successful land animals on the planet. Their tusked skulls and heavy bodies had dominated ecosystems for millions of years, yet here their numbers dwindled to almost nothing. Alongside them were amphibians that had filled rivers and swamps, their fossils reduced to fragments in the same layers. Even the plants that should have formed a steady background disappeared from the record replaced by bands of barren sediment. What shocked researchers most was the suddenness. Normally extinction creeps across thousands or even millions of years, a slow replacement of one form of life with another. But here the change was abrupt, almost like a switch being thrown. Above a certain line in the rocks, the variety of life simply ended. This suggested that something catastrophic, something global in scale, had struck with deadly force. The more scientists looked, the clearer the pattern became. In Russia, China, and South America, layers from the same period revealed the same story. Fossil-rich strata suddenly gave way to near emptiness, as if the planet had paused in mourning. The losses were not limited to one region or one type of life. They spread across continents and climates, uniting the globe in destruction. These discoveries forced paleontologists to ask new questions. What kind of event could erase nearly all marine species and most creatures on land at the same time? Could it have been a cosmic impact, like the one that later doomed the dinosaurs? Or was the cause rooted in the planet itself, something deep and relentless? The fossils, lying silent in their rocky graves, hinted at an answer, but refused to give it fully. They stood as evidence of a turning point when the Earth itself seemed unrecognizable, and the normal rhythm of evolution was broken. Beneath the surface of the oceans, the true scale of the catastrophe became clear. Rocks drawn from ancient seabeds told a story of waters, once full of life, slowly suffocating. Chemical traces revealed that oxygen, the very breath of marine ecosystems, had drained away. Without oxygen, the seas turned stagnant, dark layers forming where nothing could survive. Fish that once darted through coral reefs found no refuge, and entire communities of shell-bearing creatures dissolved into absence. Fossil evidence painted the picture with stark precision. Trilobites, which had endured for hundreds of millions of years, disappeared completely. Coral reefs that had spanned continents crumbled into silence. 
more than 9 out of 10 species in the oceans perished. The deep time record showed not a thinning of life but a collapse so absolute that the oceans themselves seemed to have died. What made this discovery even more disturbing was the suddenness. Layers rich with shells and bones gave way to empty bands of black shale, the mark of seas starved of oxygen. The transition happened within the span of a few thousand years, a blink compared to the vast stretches of geological time. It was as though an unseen hand had swept across the oceans, extinguishing nearly everything. Scientists began to suspect that the same volcanic forces reshaping the land had poisoned the waters. The eruptions in Siberia released unimaginable volumes of carbon dioxide and sulfur gases, warming the atmosphere and seeping into the seas. As temperatures rose, the oceans struggled to hold oxygen, and the balance tipped. In the absence of oxygen, microbes that thrived in the darkness multiplied, releasing hydrogen sulfide, a toxic gas that could rise into the air and kill even on land. This vision of a poisoned ocean changed how researchers thought about extinction. It was not just animals failing to adapt, but the very environment turning hostile to life. The collapse was total, erasing predators and prey, reef builders and scavengers alike. Unlike earlier extinctions that left survivors in every corner, this one reached into every niche and left only emptiness behind. The fossil record left haunting questions. If the oceans themselves could die, what hope did the land hold? If water, the cradle of life, became a tomb, what force could have caused it? Each black layer of shale carried the same message, one of suffocation and silence, as if the earth itself had closed its lungs. Scientists faced with the evidence of such sweeping death could not help but debate what had happened. Some believed the answer lay in the colossal eruptions of the Siberian traps. There, over hundreds of thousands of years, lava poured across millions of square kilometers, enough to bury entire continents in fire. Alongside the lava came gases that reshaped the planet's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide trapped heat, raising global temperatures to extremes. Sulfur dioxide formed acid rain that poisoned soils and stripped forests bare. To these scientists, the eruptions were the spark that lit the fuse of the great dying. Others argued that the story was more complex. Rising temperatures warmed the oceans, stripping them of oxygen and triggering a chain of deadly events. With oxygen gone, toxic microbes flourished, releasing hydrogen sulfide into the water and the air. This poison may have blackened the seas and filled the skies with a stench that choked life both in the water and on the land. If true, the extinction was not a single blow but a cascade, each collapse leading to another until nothing remained. Still, more theories emerged. Some pointed to sudden swings in climate, violent shifts that left ecosystems unable to adjust. Others suggested massive releases of methane from frozen seafloor deposits, a greenhouse surge that drove temperatures upward at terrifying speed. A few even wondered if cosmic forces, such as an asteroid impact or a burst of radiation from space, could have tipped an already fragile world into chaos. What made the debate striking was how much the extinction echoed across human imagination. Ancient myths spoke of skies raining fire, seas boiling, and worlds ending in flood or flame. Cultures separated by oceans told of ages before our own when life was nearly lost. Perhaps these stories were nothing more than echoes of fear, or perhaps they carried some dim memory of disasters our ancestors could barely comprehend. Yet no explanation fits the evidence entirely. Volcanism explains the carbon spikes, but not every layer of death. Methane explains rapid warming, but not the earliest signals of collapse. Each theory answers part of the riddle but leaves another piece unsolved. What is certain is that the great dying was unlike any extinction before or after. It was not just a loss of species, but a near erasure of ecosystems, a reset of life itself. Theories may differ, but the silence in the rocks speaks of an event too vast for simple answers. The most chilling revelations came not from bones, but from the chemistry of the rocks themselves. Deep within layers laid down during the Permian extinction, scientists found unmistakable signals of catastrophe. Carbon levels spiked with sudden violence, a fingerprint of immense volcanic emissions. Within only a few centuries, greenhouse gases had soared, pushing Earth into one of the hottest climates it had ever known. Temperatures climbed by double digits. Forests withered, rivers dried, and deserts spread across continents. In the seas, the warmth stripped oxygen away, leaving black stagnant waters where nothing could breathe. What life remained faced conditions so extreme that survival became a rare accident rather than a rule. Even microbes, those masters of adaptation, 
began to dominate in strange and deadly ways. They thrived in the suffocating oceans, releasing hydrogen sulfide that drifted upward, adding new layers of poison to air already choked with ash and gas. This was not a slow unraveling. The fossil record shows it was a cascade, collapsing over mere thousands of years, the blink of an eye in deep time. Coral reefs that had endured for hundreds of millions of years dissolved. Vast groups of reptiles and amphibians vanished, entire evolutionary experiments erased in silence. 90% of marine life was gone, and on land most species followed. The very foundations of ecosystems cracked, food webs fell apart, and the great story of life nearly ended before its middle chapters had been written. What startled researchers most was not only the scale of death, but the swiftness. The rocks told of a planet pushed past its limits, climate and chemistry spinning out of balance with terrifying speed. For the first time, scientists began to see Earth not as a slow, unchanging stage, but as something alive, fragile, and capable of sudden shifts that could undo millions of years of progress in an instant. The great dying became a warning etched into stone. It was proof that even the strongest forms of life could be undone, not by an external blow from space, but by the planet itself turning hostile. The extinction was not just the worst in history, it was a glimpse of how narrow the path of survival truly island. In the echo of those rocks lay the reminder that life endures, but only if balance is kept. When the storms of fire and poison finally eased, the earth was left in silence. The Permian extinction had erased nearly all familiar forms of life, and for millions of years recovery was painfully slow. Fossil layers from this period show barren stretches where ecosystems once thrived. Coral reefs, once sprawling across ancient seas, did not return for millions of years. On land, forests shrank into scattered groves, their roots struggling in soils scarred by acid and ash. It was as if the planet itself needed time to breathe again before it could support abundance. Yet in the shadows of this devastation, survivors endured. A few hardy reptiles clung to existence in dry landscapes. Small ancestors of mammals crept through sparse forests, living on scraps in a world nearly emptied of competition. In the oceans, a handful of shell-bearing creatures survived in isolated pockets where oxygen still lingered. They were fragile, but they endured, and through them life would slowly rebuild. Over the course of millions of years, new ecosystems emerged. Reefs reappeared, built not by the old coral families but by new groups of organisms. On land, the survivors diversified, filling niches left open by the extinction. From those few reptilian survivors came new branches that would eventually dominate the planet. Among them were the ancestors of dinosaurs, who rose to power in the ages that followed. The great dying had erased one world but cleared the way for another. For scientists studying this dark chapter, the lessons are sobering. The extinction showed how quickly the balance of life can unravel when climate and chemistry shift beyond their limits. It revealed that survival is not guaranteed, even for species that once seemed unshakable, but it also showed that life, though wounded, can endure and reinvent itself in astonishing ways. Across all these discoveries, one truth stands out. The Earth is not static, and its history is marked by moments when everything changes. The great dying is both a warning and a reminder. A warning that imbalance can undo even the strongest of worlds and a reminder that resilience lies in adaptation and endurance. Which of these discoveries shocked you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments, and do not forget to subscribe for more unbelievable stories.